I am Rajan Krishnan. I'm a painter basically. I live in Kerala, Kochi. Uh, I was born in the central Kerala. I moved to Kochi in 2013 and since then I've been working from here. This particular work was done in 2007. I created the work through a community project. I worked with nearly 300 people to create the original ore. The actual work is four times larger than this. Here I, I am exhibiting a small portion of the ore. Ore means the basic material. You know, the idea was to address earth through an art form uh, which can create kind of sensibility that make people to think about their own environments and uh, you know their own life and where they are standing. So uh, since I am a painter uh, and I do explore you know uh, images and forms through paintings but some of my paintings sometimes demand another dimension of my work. So while doing a hill uh, which was a very gigantic uh, image that particular hill demanded something uh, concrete and something tangible, something which you can, you know, handle with your uh, fingers and hand and something you can just walk around. So that's how I thought of the particular ore, this hill. Uh, also, this has something to do with a myth, extinct myth, a practice of people who used to worship a hill. They used to go there and they used to put some images created by themselves and they got them baked at their, home, their own home. So this was a practice uh, uh, that was there probably ages, years and years back. So I, when I was a child, I had seen this. This was near my house, there is a hill. This was there, a deposit of uh, uh, figurines, which had uh, you know, archeological significance, though that wasn't explored that much. So I had a chance to see some of the figurines as a child. So that stayed on in my memory. So when I was recollecting a particular landscape I wanted to bring into my painting, I re recollected this particular image also, the collection of figurines. This was uh, in 2007, as I said. So then I thought, why couldn't I make something you know, that can work as a catalyst to connect people with the, that extinct myth practice and you know belief systems my personal concern is to connect uh, my thinking my life with the things around you know where i stand where i live what i communicate every day every moment so that's how you know for me painting as a medium is a uh, vehicle to carry these things to into the uh, lives of people into the memory of people into the you know, th thoughts of people, you know. So once they see an image, you know, they should be in touch with uh, the surroundings. You know? They should be able to recollect where they live, you know. Because I think at the moment, the most gra gravest issues in the world is environmental. That's the most important political issue also, because we are less concerned, least concerned of the planet where we're living. So I am trying to bring in some good sense to where we are living and what are these, you know, trees or plants meant to us, you know, because that is what helped the earth sustain, you know, sustainable and our life also so much is dependent on all these things. There's, these are the things that provide us. These are the things that give us uh, the oxygen, you know, basically. They, they, what we breathe what they exhale. If I ever brand myself, I brand myself as a painter or, or an artist, you know, an artist with uh, 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 human concerns. I don't brand myself as a political artist, nor as an environmental artist. Because though th that is there in my work, you know, people must be able to read that and they should, they should be able to recognize that instead of myself calling, you know, I am an I am a environmental artist or a political artist, you know. It's not the duty of the artist to claim such things, but it is the duty of the people to understand that from the work of an artist. Initially, as a young, you know, when I was very young, when I was a student, Probably I had such thoughts that art can bring in you know, changes in lives of people, especially the poor people. Then later I uh, realized that because art is usually practiced in, within very limited enclosure, so it's not reaching to everyone as uh, literature does or as cinema does. So because painting or visual art is you know, viewed 
in a very limited circle of people. So, uh, of course, it can, uh, such lives, you know, poverty or suffering can uh, reflect in the work. But I don't think as an artist, uh, I'll be able to bring in a great change uh, to such issues in the country. But of course, as a documenter, as I told you that as a painter, I'm a documenter also. So I can, I even try to document such or bring in such issues into some of my works. I don't know how far reaching the results are, but they are there. So once you go through the painting, you know, except the tree paintings or plant painting, there are other paintings I have done with, uh, you know, such issues, uh, you know, dealing with poverty, not poverty, dealing with uh, what you call human emotions or human situations. You know, there were interesting things happening while I, you know, making this uh, uh, work. So with the people I worked, I had only asked them to make, you know, restrict the, their creations into five, uh, four to four, uh, five inch size, because it, otherwise, you know, these are uh, solid pieces uh, tech for technical reasons. Otherwise they may break or, you know, they may, not, they may not get baked so well. So that was the reason I asked them to restrict the size. And as far as the images are concerned, I told them to make whatever they wanted to. You know, you know, these were some of the people were touching clay for the first time, so they were like children, you know, playing with uh, clay. So I asked them to you just explore, explore your creativity, your emotions, and you know, touch clay with the maximum love and affection and emotions. So they started exploring, and one day they told me that they were going to make some animals, and they asked me what kind of animals they should be making. So I had given them complete freedom. You just explore. You just do what you want to do. So I, you know, some of them. This is an elephant. You know, I don't know who created. I'm, a, you know, from the 200 people I worked with, and this could be, this could be, a cow or a horse or I, you know, it is partly abstract and partly minimal, and but still you can make out this is an animal. You know, and this is of course a puppy. You know, it looks like. At the same time, it has the lion head. So, you know, there are <laughs> mixed things happened in a single work, and this could either be a pot or a flower. Who knows, you know? <laughs> okay, so initially I started working with um, a few of my artist friends, students particularly, from the nearby art colleges. And later, uh, within a week, you know, because people knew that something is happening and there was news in the newspaper also, then many local people came, you know, just people who just passed by were interested in uh, coming and working with us. So I asked them, you know, whoever who wanted to work, come along, come to the you know, workshop and work and explore what you want to do. So most of the people were laymen, you know, who have never known anything about art. And they came and started working with us and you know, they stayed on till, you know, for three months. Yeah. Or is, you know, where uh, that is the basic of, of all materials, or all, all elements, okay. So then it is, we find it in earth, you know. Mostly this is there in the soil. It's all extracted from the soil. So the basic idea was how you extract something from, from the soil, you know. Because what we have all around is all extracted from the soil, from the earth. Earth has that much capacity to bear all these things in it. And the human technology, you know, try to dis you know extract things from earth and uh, make it useful in different ways. So we have extracted gold, and now we have extracted plastic also. You know, gold is so precious. All gems are precious, and plastic has become a havoc to the earth nowadays. You know, so this is the basic idea I try to deal with the uh, making of ore, like you know, and the hill plays a role because. Um, this particular deposit, the archaeologically significant figurine deposit, was found in, in, in a hill, on a hilltop. So I wanted to resemble my work. That's why this is heaped. Also, in India, the heaps have so many meanings, and which is seen in so many situations. If you walk wherever, you can see different sort of heaps all around. You know. Also, I was born in an agrarian society, and agriculture has so much to do with the heaps. You know. So we heap the grains, and so much memory is gone into making the heaps, in fact. So they, you know, this were the actual mountain I had created in Bombay in my first show. They would probably have a nightmare in the morning because they <laughs> have seen something they, you know, never conceived, you know. 
and uh, having seen this I, I this is posted on facebook having seen this i read some comments made by some of my friends in on the facebook recently somewhere had made a comment that this is this a heap of cashew nuts you know <laughs> and i felt so happy because that's one thing i at least they identify it with something they have seen okay and somebody had commented that is it the heap of coconuts you know and they both know that uh, this is not actually uh, either heap of you know cashew nuts or coconut but they suddenly think of something they can recollect you know so they i think the memory does matter in that case you know they carry it in the, not in the same exact form but in different associations you know when i moved to kochi in 2000 uh, 2000 this was a very young uh, art scene it was, this was in the very premature uh, you know situation at that point of time then we all all together worked to make it a big uh, you know almost a, now what you see kochi art scene you know several things are happening so there are lots of efforts and people worked behind to making kochi a scene